Welcome back, curious people. Today, our statement reads, For this configuration, calculate the force on P2 due to P1 and the force on P1 due to P2. Are the answers consistent with Newton's third law? B. Find the total torque on P2 with respect to the center of P1 and compare it to the torque on P1 about the same point. So a quick review of the diagram. We have P1 that points up and P2 that points to the right. Uh, notice that they're at a uh, 90 degree angle and that'll come into play later. For our first part in part A, we want the force of uh, P1 onto P2. So we need uh, the electric field of P1. And so we see in our diagram, we orient the uh, origin such that P1 is at the origin and P2 is on the y-axis. And we know that based on P1, E1 points down in the negative Z direction. So the force F2 on P2 due to P1 is equal to P2 dotted with the del operator multiplied by the electric field from P1. Uh, this simplifies down to P2 and the partial derivative with respect to Y of E1. We know that the uh, electric field from P1 is P1 over 4 pi epsilon naught r cubed in the theta hat direction. Remember, there was an r and a theta hat direction, but since we oriented it as such, we only need a theta hat. Uh, this transcribes into uh, negative P1 over 4 pi epsilon naught y cubed in the z hat direction. Remember on our diagram how we were in the negative z direction, and we're at a distance y away from the origin? not r. Um, so plugging these all in, we just take the derivative and we get a nice uh, compact equation. Uh, F2 equals 3 P1 P2 over 4 pi epsilon naught r to the fourth z hat. So it's pointing upwards and it's positive. Um, now if we look at the second scenario for part A, we uh, go back to our diagram and we tilt or rotate the scenario so where P2 is now at the origin and P1 is pointing in the negative Y direction. Uh, and then P2 would therefore be pointing in the positive Z direction. So to calculate F1, put P2 at the origin, pointing in the positive Z direction. Then P1 is at negative R Z hat and it points in the negative Y direction, which we just saw in the diagram. So F1 then is equal to P1 dotted with del times E2 uh, but when we simplify this, we know that the partial derivative with respect to y needs to be evaluated where x and y are equal to 0 and z is equal to negative r. Uh, so we need to find e2 as a function of x, y, z. Recall in our coordinate free form of the dipole that we could write the electric field as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, uh, where we had 3p. Uh, dot it with the r hat multiplied by r hat minus the dipole moment p. Here we just uh, put it in for our scenario and factored out an r cubed out front, and we're left with 3 p2 dot it with r vector times the r vector divided by r squared minus p2, where r is just our uh, Cartesian vector x, x hat, y, y hat, z, z hat, and p2 is just uh, the magnitude p2 in the z hat direction. So for this electric field, there's a lot of algebra to simplify down and get everything compact before we even take the derivative. So let's get started on it. Um, we plug everything in, substitute it in. Uh, we see here that um, the dot product leads to P2Z, uh, since those are the only components that were needed to be dotted. And uh, we're left with the R vector over R squared. Because we have this, what, uh, expression over r squared, we're going to take the second term in the bracket and and multiply it by r squared over r squared so we can join them in one fraction. Uh, we see that in the next line, we substitute in the definition for r. Uh, recall that to find the magnitude of r, you just take the square root to, uh, of the component squared. And since they're squared or uh, cubed, we just multiply that in and we see that we have three halves exponents or one exponent. Um, so then we also factored out a P2 in the second line since it doesn't really matter here. 
Uh, notice how we're going to have simplification in the z hat direction. In the third line, we factored in that 1 over r cubed term. And we see that our denominator is now something of 5 halves power. Everything is distributed and condensed in their coordinate direction. So you have x hat, y hat, and z hat. Now we can take the derivative. And uh, we note that we could write the denominator as a product with the uh, negative exponent. So we do that here and apply the product rule. Um, what's really great about this is it looks gross, but since we're evaluating at x and y equals zero, that second term cancels to zero immediately. Uh, so that makes calculation or simplifying the calculation much easier. Uh, and then we whittle it down all the way to what we see in the second to last line. We plug in z equal negative r and simplify it through. Uh, in the denominator, we know that negative r squared is equal to r squared. The negatives will cancel one another when multiplying. So then we have 2 times 5 halves, which just leaves us with 5. So that simplifies down in the final line. And we're able to cancel a factor of r out. Uh, and the negatives cancel, leaving us with a force of 3p1, p2 divided by 4 pi epsilon naught, r to the fourth in the y hat direction. But let's recall that we transform this scenario in order to make it convenient based on the origin. So the y hat in these coordinates corresponds to the negative z hat in the original system. So these results are indeed consistent with Newton's third law, where f1 equals negative f2. That's pretty cool to see. Uh, so for part B, we need to find the torque. Uh, if you recall in the text, we discussed the torque in, and uh, we know that it is equal to P cross E plus R cross F for the total torque uh, in the system. We found P cross E uh, in this configuration a couple questions ago, actually in the beginning of the chapter, I believe 4.5. Uh, so we just have that result that we can put in the first set of brackets. Uh, now for the second set, r here is pointing, the vector r is pointing in the y hat direction. Uh, so we'll just do the cross product there. We know that y cross z equals x hat, so that's how we uh, get the same direction. Uh, and then we notice we have the same factor, so 1 minus 3, or uh, negative 1 plus 3 equals 2. And we see that our net torque is equal to 2 P1, P2, or 4 pi epsilon naught R cubed in the x hat direction. This is equal and opposite to the torque P1 due to P2 with respect to the center of P1. Great to see consistency amongst these things.